What's good, y'all? It's your boy Ross back at again with another video, and we gotta talk about this episode of Monday Night Raw, man. This was another episode, Crash Out Eccentric. There was a lot of crash outs, crash out moments on this episode. I loved it. It was action packed. It was fun, and the main event ended off beautifully, man. We gotta talk about a lot of stuff that happened on the show. We're gonna get right into it. Try to take as much notes as I possibly could. Because this was a fun Monday Night Raw. It went by very quickly. Definitely enjoyed the two-hour format. And it you, you got into the action really quick on this particular episode. So, for those who don't know, uh, Samantha Irving. Uh, uh, Samantha Irving is no longer um, the Monday Night Raw ring, uh, ring announcer. Um, in fact, I think she's a pretty much left or leaving, uh, well, has left WWE. Uh, that was the news that everyone was talking about tonight. Uh, so I'm wishing her well in any future endeavors that she may partake in. Uh, she definitely was a very talented young woman at what she uh, would bring as a ring announcer, the flair and the, the, the extra to add a little bit more character to these wrestlers and their in-ring, you know, personas or in there like when they come out to the ring and the you know the type of energy that she would bring is going to be sorely missed but in in her place we ended up getting lillian garcia tonight she was the in ring announcer for tonight and you can tell it's been a minute since she's done it full time i believe uh there are reports saying that she will be the full time ring uh in ring announcer going forward on monday night raw um but you can tell she was a little rusty she hadn't been out there in a minute so she was botching up names or i wouldn't say botching up names but she was messing up names and saying people that weren't there yet you know she kind of has to get used to things but when she does she will i know a lot of people are like oh she's botching up a lot tonight what's going on with lillian we need samantha back just give her some time lillian is a goat in her own right she has been killing it and she has killed it in the past as an in-ring announcer so just give her some time i think she'll be um, just fine, you know, with a little bit more repetition, getting back into the swing of things. So it was cool to see her out there. But <clears throat> before we even get into like just how the show even like before the very first match, you know how Monday Night Raw they show the people walking into the arena. So you see Seth, uh, you you see Bronson Reed. He's walking into the arena. He has his little suitcase with him. And you see somebody running up the ramp behind him. And you realize it's Seth Rollins. And Seth Rollins attacks Bronson Reed. Starts hitting him with his own suitcase. Start packing him up with his own suitcase. I loved it. The security had to separate him. And I love the fact that Seth Rollins said, nah, 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 nah. It's on site tonight. So it was all continuously like in one shot. So after they separate him, he walks all the way back to Gorilla, walks to the ring. He's not chanting and singing. He's not smiling. He gets a microphone and he's like, hey, Bronson Reed, big boy, you want to make a name for yourself? How about you come out here and I'll make you famous? Bronson Reed ends up coming out there throwing a JAG security. Adam Pierce is trying to stop him. Other security trying to stop him. And at this point, he gets to the ringside. And that's when Seth Rollins dives through the ropes and starts attacking Bronson Reed. They get in the ring. They start scuffling. And then at one point, um, Bronson Reed looks like he's about to go for the um for the tsunami but um Seth Rollins rolls out the way smartly he rolls out the way he's not trying to get hit with the tsunami once again so Bronson Reed hits him with like a shoulder tackle off the ring apron then he sets him up uh on the announce table Bronson Reed is throwing more security and he looks like he's about to hit Seth Rollins on the announce table as Seth Rollins laying there, but Seth Rollins moves out the way as Bronson Reed splashes through the announce table. Such a great moment, and they still separate him. Bronson Reed ends up getting back up. It was great. Loved it. And throughout the show, they were going at it. It was <clears throat> fantastic. You had them later on in the show, Bronson Reed's trying to talk. Uh, actually, it wasn't even Bronson Reed. It was... Um, Adam Pierce was doing an interview about the chaoticness at the beginning of the show. And then all of a sudden, Bronson Reed comes to talk to him. And then that's when Seth Rollins attacks him. They separate him. Then another part of the show, uh, 
Seth Rollins is trying to talk to Adam Pierce, and then that's when Bronson Reed attacks him. And they have a, a, another pull apart. They were going at each other the entire night. And then finally, Adam Pierce said, I've had enough of this craziness. You want a match? You want a match? Fine. We're going to have a match at Crown Jewel. It's on. And Seth is loving it. Bronson Reed's like, I'm going to destroy you. This is great. Fucking love it. This is how you make people care. People are going to care about this match. I am excited to see how this match will play out. They have done a great job with Bronson Reed, Seth Rollins, and Seth Rollins. What do we have to say? Mr. MVP for WrestleMania this year. This is going to be fun. And once again, this doesn't even involve no titles. When you have feuds that don't involve titles, got something great there. Next, we got the uh, we got to talk about um, New Day, Xavier and Kofi going against um, AOP from the um, I believe their group name is the Final Testament. Um, I believe it's like a uh, they, I think that we're having a, a tournament to see who's going to be the number one contender for the Raw uh, Tag Team Championships. So we had them going against uh, uh, New Day versus AOP Final Testament, and <clears throat> during. The match, you see Miz come out there. Miz is kind of low-key aligned himself with the final testament. So Miz is sitting <clears throat> in front of the uh, announce, announce table. And all of a sudden, you see R-Truth. And R-Truth is not joking. R-Truth is not laughing. He jumps the barricade and attacks the Miz right in front of the, uh, the announce table. Like, this was really cool to see R-Truth trying to get his lick back like I, I really did enjoy that and ultimately because of that distraction Kofi Kingston was able to get the roll-up pin and they advanced <clears throat> in this number one contenders like tournament of sorts and I love it <clears throat> you had um R-Truth come out there raise both their hands Xavier is happy uh um Kofi Kingston is happy they get out the ring R-Truth is celebrating but that's when um, the New Testament and carrying crossing them start packing them up, attacking them, and well, really the Miz starts attacking them too as well. And you see Kofi trying to go back out there to help our truth, and Xavier's like, "No, bro, we good. We just won. We don't need to help him." I love that they're still playing with that dynamic of Xavier's not trying to go out there and do any extra work. They just won. He wants to go back in the back and chill. Hey, thanks, R-Truth, but good luck to you, my boy. So I like that they're still doing that. But ultimately, it was fine because the lights go out. The lights go out, and we all know what that means. The Wyatt Six appear everywhere around the ring, and chaos ensues. You have the Miz just laying in the, in the middle of the ring in damn near like fetal position, just trying to wait for all the chaos to stop. And as the Miz... Thinks he's by himself as everyone disperse. He thinks he's by himself. That's when Uncle Howdy appears behind him. Looks like he's about to attack him. But Paul Elring sacrifices himself and get hit with the mandible claw as the old man proceeds to die in the middle of the ring from the mandible claw given to him by Uncle Howdy, man. So they kind of been teasing it. I know they did last week. With the Miz segment, I think he was talking to Karrion Cross, I believe, at some point. And you can see the screen flutter. I think they're targeting the Miz in the final testament. Especially the Miz, considering he did leave his partner, R-Truth, high and dry. And you know how the wide six is. They don't like it when people leave their family and betray their family. So, I definitely did enjoy um, what they got going on there. Um... Like I said, this show was full of of pretty much people crashing out. We ended up getting a match with Damage Control uh, versus Raquel and and um, Liv with Lash Legend and J uh, Jakara Jackson once again at ringside. I know they're supposed to be setting up the match Damage Control versus Lash Legends and Jakara Jackson at NXT, I believe, tomorrow, actually. So I know they've been at ringside, and I love what they've been doing with them, but you kind of knew they were going to get involved. Once again, that's what happened. Uh, <clears throat> they got involved, and the match ended off in a no, in a DQ. And I love the finisher 
especially of uh lash legend i think they they call it the the lash extension or something like that love that finisher it looks pretty good and they've been utilizing these ladies a lot on the main roster giving them more of a, a heel type vibe so i'm you know i'm really liking what they're doing hopefully they continue to use them it seems like they're slowly but surely starting to fade them in into the main roster i think that's going to be dope so love what they're doing there so after they attack damage uh control and, and you know get them out the way you have raquel and Liv pretty much standing face to face to these newcomers from nxt and then all of a sudden rhea ripley music hit and you know rhea's all about crashing out as well rhea gets down to the ring and this is when i i made the mention in the chat that rhea is hella op not only did she go out there and handle up on raquel she packed up live efficiently might i add Liv got a little bit of offense but it didn't matter raquel got a little bit of offense didn't matter dominic even comes out there and he ends up getting put in some a submission type move and they had to save him and essentially the three heels had to run away from the overpowered rhea ripley and her mission is plain and simple she's gonna do whatever she can to take that title from Liv morgan and nobody is going to stop her at some point i do think they're going to get the upper hand on her maybe next week. You know, it's literally a 2v1 situation. So we'll see how that plays out. But definitely, um, you know, been enjoying uh, what they have going on here. Uh, the question is, when will, if she does, um, get the title back from Liv Morgan? When would that possibly happen? Don't know yet. So we'll see. <clears throat> and we got to talk about, obviously, the main event. Jay Uso versus braun breaker now if you watch what happened on monday uh friday night smackdown how jay came in there with the bloodline he was talking his stuff and you know he was basically like why did you get the tongans why did you get jacob he called out jacob to his face and you knew there was going to be some repercussions for that and that's exactly what happened um at the beginning of the match braun breaker was definitely dominant he was you know you know, stopping Jay at any moment. He, Jay couldn't really get too much offense going. But towards the end of the match, when Jay started getting a little bit more offense, that's when the bloodline came through the crowd. You First, you only see Jacob and Solo appear, and they have two tickets. Like, hey, we just came to support, bro. We here to, we got your back, bro. We here to, we, we here, we, we want to see you win. So he's already like, apprehensive jay and that's when you hear solo say yo look out and it was braun breaker trying to hit him you know trying to attack him so then on the other side you see tonga loa and tama tonga try to assist he ends up kicking tonga loa and he ends up tama tonga um ends up trying to jump the barricade he ends up super kicking him for his trouble like you know i i don't need y'all and it's funny i don't know if y'all heard this tonga loa just died but Tama Tonga literally jumped in the air. And all you hear is, yeah, 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 as he's hitting it. I was like, bro, what the fuck? What in the wild thornberry? Donnie from the wild thornberry, y'all remember? That's fucking Tama Tonga, bro. Yeah, 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 yeah. Fucking love them, bro. They fucking love them. Anywho, so now Solo's mad. He hops the barricade. Like, what are you fucking doing? I'm trying to fucking help you. What are you doing? Like, why are you being stupid? What are you doing? And all of a sudden, Braun Breaker comes from the other side, running about to hit the spear, and Solo moves Jay out the way and eats the spear. So Solo is actively trying to help Jay here. He wants Jay to understand, we got your back. If you acknowledge me, I have your back. I want, I'm, I'm trying to help you. So once that happened, this is probably the highlight of the match, and it had nothing to do with the actual match itself between Jay and uh and Braun Breaker. Jacob hops the barricade. He gets into Braun Breaker's face. Like they lock eyes and they walk to each other. And when I say the crowd started chanting, holy shit, I got goosebumps because I'm like, this is a money making match obviously he's gonna feel some type of way he took out his tribal chief 
So he walked right up to his face and and Jacob, Jacob and Braun face to face. The dog versus the Samoan werewolf. Whenever this match happens, take my fucking money. This was great. Fantastic. They didn't even throw blows. Just the idea of this chef's kiss. So while they're locking eyes and ready to throw hands, that's when Jay attacks both of them through a suicide dive. He does a dive through the ropes and, you know, attacks both of them. He gets Braun Breaker back into the ring, hits him with a super kick, hits him with another super kick, hits him with a spear off the ropes, then goes to the top the same way he won the last time he faced Braun Breaker. Goes up to the top, hits the splash for the one, for the two, and he kicks out. I was like, oh my God, bro. He kicked out. I was like, this is so good. Good false finish. Braun Breaker rolls out. So you see Jay trying to circle around the ring. He looks like he may just, you know, spear him once again. But then he gets cut off by Jacob Fatu. Jacob Fatu hits him with a super kick, then picks up Jay, hits him with a Samoan drop on the announce table. Braun Breaker watched it all happen. And then after he did that, Jacob picks up Solo and they walk to the entrance ramp. Obviously, Jacob felt some type of way what he said to him on, Mon on SmackDown and he just tackled him through the ropes so he already doesn't like jay but you can tell this wasn't an order from solo jacob just decided to do that so at that point it was pretty much over uh braun threw uh jay back into the ring he runs the ropes he hits the spear on jay for the one the two and the three and your new intercontinental champion is braun breaker man and the show goes off the air as braun Breaker as the IC champ in the bloodline essentially cost him the Intercontinental Championship. So I'm very interested to see what Jay has to say. I know he's going to pop up on Monday on SmackDown. And it's going to be one of those things where I can definitely see Solo saying, that's not on me. I tried to help you. I tried to be in your corner, but you didn't want to listen. You didn't want our help. And look what happened. Because you didn't take our help, you lost. And that's how we're going to get them uh, essentially, you know, at some point. So it's probably not going to happen yet, but at some point, Jay is going to join Jimmy and Roman. And I don't know if we're going to get Sammy as that last partner. We will see. We'll see how that plays out. But eventually, Jay is going to join Jimmy and Roman. And uh, we're getting closer to the bloodline warfare, man. But hey, this was a great, great great monday night raw i really enjoyed it y'all let me know what y'all rate the show on a scale of one to ten what was your favorite match what was your favorite segment favorite part of the show y'all let me know but i appreciate all the love support y'all showing on the channel road to 150k appreciate y'all kicking it with me see y'all next one peace